Welcome. This question says the rod is 2 metres long and has a cross-sectional area of 20 square centimetres. One end is at 15 degrees C and the other end is at 30. The material has a coefficient of thermal conductivity of 4 joules per degree C metre second. And then how much energy conducts along the rod in 4 minutes. So let's visualise here's our rod. And this is 2 metres. The cross-sectional area is 20 square centimetres. And immediately I'm going to change that. So 20 times 10 to the minus 4 square metres. Remember, don't do anything about the number. Just leave the number as it is. And then do the, the transfer for this. And if there's 10 to the 2 centimetres in a metre, there's 10 to the 2 times 10 to the 2 square centimetres in a square metre. So 1 square centimetre is 10 to the minus 4 square metres. Watch out for that. Um, we have a temperature of 15 degrees C here and it's 30 degrees C there. And we have a K thermal conductivity for joules per degree C meter second. And there's energy flowing down here. This is Q. And what we get is we got to get is that the power is equal to well, that's going to equal the amount of energy flowing per second. So that's power equals Q over delta T and that equals K times well if we have more air we get more energy per second flowing down and then the rest is taken care of with the temperature co uh, temperature gradient which is my delta T my change in temperature over my delta X my change in length um, so that means that Q, the amount of heat, is K, A, delta big T over delta X. But if I want the amount of heat, I've got to multiply by this amount of time. So Q is equal to K was 4. The area, 20 times 10 to the minus 4 my temperature difference, big T is temperature, temperature difference is 30 minus 15, my length difference, position difference, length 2 meters, my time, it says 4 minutes, and you're supposed to know you've got to work in seconds, so that will be 4 times 60. So Q is equal to, and the rest is, is sums really, isn't it? It's basically 4 times 20 second E to the minus 4, using my EE -E term on my calculator, times 15, times 4, times 60, and then divide the whole thing by 2. And I'm getting 14.4, and that's going to be in joules because I'm going to need SI units, so 14.4 joules. So there we have it. Um, you've got to know the equation. Um, this is a great opportunity for a, a, a test question to throw at you different types of prefixes and just see how you deal with it. This is a great opportunity to just throw you geometries and say, oh, we're going to have a rectangle, we're going to have a circular cross section, and here's the radius, or I'm going to give you a triangular cross section, or I'm going to give you a rectangular cross section. You know, it's a whole bunch of possibilities there. Um, what I find incidentally is if I ask for the power, uh, a certain proportion of the class will get it right. But if I ask for the energy in a certain time, 
I find the percentage of the class getting the question right falls off, question correct falls off, and more than I would expect. And I think this is familiarity. It's basically not really knowing what power is, not really getting comfortable with the equations. And it's a shame because, you know, if you know the power, you know the energy per second. If you know how long, you know the amount of energy. It's a small change. And yet, because I think people try and remember how specific problems are done rather than looking at the underlying skills, I think people make this much harder than it need be and, and throw points away, to be honest. So there we have it, 14.4 joules.